Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the stream. Tonight, since the, we had the opening and closing of the GameStop pre-orders yet again for the Marvel pinball machine, I think it was the third time it went up there and then was, you know, shortly out of stock because the demand for these pinball machines is absolutely outrageous right now, but I thought it would be a good opportunity for those of you that already have the Marvel pinball table on pre-order to give you a little bit of a preview of the game tables now that we know the included tables that are going to be coming out on this machine so one of the cool things about the GameStop listing was it had some information and I went ahead and put together a nice little infographic for everybody earlier this morning threw it together in Photoshop that way everybody could see you know the need to know information as far as the features the specs the dimensions the height the weight and all that stuff that all these pinball machines are going to have but now that we officially know the game listings for all three of these machines I mean now now we can really like kind of get into the nitty-gritty of what we know and expect so I own all of these games on Steam so I thought it'd be a great opportunity tonight to go ahead and you know showcase these games for you new pre-order people out there that have maybe never played these games on Steam and show you what uh, you're maybe going to be getting because even though Arcade One Up is running their machine on you know Android architecture and I'm playing these games on Steam on my gaming PC it's gonna be a relatively close apples to apples comparison because the games have been optimized for the arcade one up architecture so you know we'll know what we're gonna get so without further ado let me get things situated and get these tables going let me know in the chat what you guys what table you want me to start off with because we've got you know all sorts of different tables we got spider-man civil war wolverine x-men thor marvel's women of power ghost rider venom fantastic four and the fear itself table so those are the 10 tables that we're getting on these arcade one-up marvel machines like i said unfortunately it does appear to be sold out of gamestop already it didn't last long um, word is on the street it might be available later on at best buy or walmart same thing with uh, star wars pre-orders that's supposedly going up middle of november towards end of november is the kind of the the rumor so to speak of when the attack from mars and star wars pinball pre-orders are going to be available as well so we'll have to see in a couple of weeks if you know Marvel comes back into stock with somebody else or if uh, you just have to wait till 2021 but let me know guys what what table what game you want me to start out with you know shoot we got Venom we got Venom I see Spider-Man sorry I've got to like pop out the chat I've got to play the pinball full screen otherwise it's way too tiny for my old man eyes so I've got to have the chat over here and then I've got to have you know the pinball over here Mad Dad Gaming, what's up? Missed all the announcements today working. I know that. I, I struggle with that myself, Nikki. Attack from Mars. Hey, Rostalgia, you're cheating. This is Marvel Focus. I'll do another one for Attack from Mars and another one for Star Wars because I want to give everybody their own like focus. That way we're not off the rails everywhere. Marvel, Venom, Venom, Attack from Mars, <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man. I think every... I think... I think the attack from Mars is going to be like the the sleeper hit. Like everyone knows and loves Star Wars, but I think the attack from Mars is going to be like their number one seller out of these three units, just because I think there's more people that prefer those physical, you know, Williams tables as opposed to these like you know created digitally animated tables that exist. So Fear itself, Doctor Strange, Spider Man. Uh, we'll go with Spider Man. I think that's honestly like my favorite table. Single player and hot out of this and I'm just playing with a Xbox One controller for convenience so using the triggers as the flipper yeah we've got a lot of a lot of votes for Attack from Mars like I said I do believe it's going to be their number one seller and I know a lot of people are out there like uh, you know it's kind of like down the road whether people like the Zen tables or not just because some people think they're like overly animated and super cartoony so I think that's why a lot of people are kind of gravitating towards that Attack from Mars um, machine just because it's based on you know actual physical tables that existed back in the day has to be number one says your average gamer Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles your average gamer also says there's way too many Star Wars fans I mean it's a franchise has been around for a long time and it's you know it's up there in all of pop culture so let's go ahead and get started with spider-man i am not good at any of these so uh, it won't take me long to die so don't worry and 
and some of these tables it's, it's very comical like obviously they can't like go out and get the voice actors from movies and things like that some of them are like really bad voice acting and some of them are actually pretty good like the Star Wars tables um, I've been impressed with like the the fill-in voice actors they find for those tables because some of them are actually pretty good I really like this. This is probably my favorite Marvel table next to maybe the pictures. Infinity Gauntlet Marker, one. I like the fire, just fire the different fire. levels and everything here. The different. I, I'm always been a Spider-Man comic book nerd anyway. That's one of the main series I, I comic collect. Why well, no Avengers table? I think because it's a Hulk issue. You know. It, it was really surprising me when I saw those 10 titles released because I thought for sure it would be all like, you know, your your A-list heavy hitter, like to not see Captain America on here or not see Iron Man. I was like, holy cow. Like, granted, they already have, you know, alluded to version 2 tables, so we don't know if like maybe purposely they were holding some, some of the big big name titles back so they could have content for that version 2 table that's heavily rumored slash suggested that's going to be happening later on with you know more bells and whistles like Wi-Fi and a, a download store and things like that but yeah I was really kind of shocked to see some of these that uh, didn't make the didn't make the cut so to speak I mean we still got some great great titles for sure but you, know, you got Venom but you don't have Captain America you got the ladies of Marvel but you don't have Iron Man so teach their own I suppose X-Men next is uh, what Feral Inferno is saying. I like that X-Men table. Man, these bumpers are going crazy. Like, I don't even have to do anything. Like, the bumpers doing all the work right now. Spider-Man and Venom are some of the better tables, I agree. Pinball done right. What I'm anxious to really experience is uh, just getting these, you know, arcade one-up machines. I'm going for that Star Wars one. That one's my absolute must-have just because I'm a Star Wars dork. Um, I would get this Marvel table if it wasn't for space issues. That and the fact that I already pre-ordered the PS5 and the new Xbox and I literally could not swing purchasing both of those and two arcade one at pinball ma machines so I had to had to say okay I'll just pick one so I'm gonna go with Star Wars and alright so I lost Spider-Man like I said didn't take long. But I'm looking forward to just, you know, being able to turn them on and go. Like, even with my gaming PC, I've, like, got to get things situated and ready to go. And it's it's not as, like, turnkey as I would like it to be. Single player and, you know, with these machines, I'll just be literally be able to turn it on and ready to go. Alright. Let's go do Venom next. Oh, uh, no, X-Men. That, that was the next photo I got. We'll go to the X-Men table. <laughs> Enigma, no. Um, definitely no hentai pinball. <laughs> Fantastic Four, the first family should always be first. That's a solid argument. That is a solid argument. I really like the colors on this table. I mean, that may sound like really silly, but like, this is a very pretty aesthetic table. Randy Wilson says the picture of the outrun cabinet was not that great looking. Well, it, it's an early 3D render, so it's not even the physical, you know, machine. So keep that in mind. So the specs and dimensions and you know proportions might be a little off because it's just a 3D render, and it's an old one at that. I can tell you that for sure. So, but you know, it's nice to know that you know if you've been waiting for an outrun sit-down cabinet, it's coming. So prepare your wallet. Is there language change? So I know in some of these, yes, but I don't. I can't speak to the arcade one-up like features until I actually get it. So I would assume so, but not, can't answer that for sure until we see the actual product. Control the strength of your optic blast. Matt Harmon says I've really only played pinball arcade collections for PS4, so Attack from Mars might be the better one for him. The dawn of a new Look at that ball just hand. right out of the gate. Rage I didn't even get a chance at it. Card. Granted, I can like nudge the table, but still, that was that was rigged. And this is Ramp Central. This X Men table. That's some crazy shoots. Oh, 
almost lost it. There we go. So what do you guys think of the price point? So the, the GameStop listing is $550 for this marble machine. Um, there's other suggestions that they might be able to hit a, a $500 price point with some of the other machines, whether it be the Attack from Mars or the Star Wars. You think 550 is too much? You think it's just about right? You think it should be 500 400 What do you guys think is the, the sweet spot for these machines? Guns N' Roses pinball machine looks fantastic as well, but that thing is probably $10,000. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of awesome physical machines out there that I would kill to have in my collection, but again, they're like the price of, you know, a gently, or not gently, a used car. Like, I can buy a, a really good shape Honda Civic for those prices, and uh, for me, it's like, I would have to have stupid money in my bank to justify spending six, seven, eight thousand dollars on a pinball machine, especially a mechanical one. Like, they're great. But uh, they also, just like you know, your full-size arcade cabinets, they they require some TLC to keep going, and uh, that's quite the investment to spend eight thousand dollars on something that you may have to tinker with down the line and replace parts, and you know, keep working on. Oh, lost one. ball magneto gravitation thing is going I can I can hit that one pretty regularly so that's handy that works for me Enigma says 300 plus Adams is 399 it'll be interesting to see if you know, the price changes with version 2 when they add things like Wi-Fi in the download store. If it goes, you know, up or if it stays the same. Um, just talk about them potentially having like a little add-on kit for Generation 1 owners maybe that like, you know, gives you the Wi-Fi somehow, the Wi-Fi functionality on your existing table so you don't have to like technically buy a whole brand new version 2 cabinet, but technically that's all speculation and hearsay until we see it so we'll have to wait oh shot it down the drain come on lasted longer on this table at least my old friend as Magneto starts attacking. Shoot the ramps and then the center targets. Don't lose your focus. And I lost the multi ball. Of course. Dawn of a new age is at hand. The age of mutant kind. Trying to take down Magneto. It's not working. He is the toughest geriatric man I know. He definitely takes his vitamins. Because, I mean, look at him. He's like, you know, he survived the Holocaust and he's still got a six pack. Between man and mutant. I prefer to destroy man's bridges. We will need to help you, Iceman. Oh, lost it. Crap. Over to the right. On its side. Cyclops. Control the screen. Lionheart says, I hope they release a 32 inch special edition next year. Enigma. It's time to sneak into the movie theater. It's, it's tempting. Unfortunately, my local movie theater just shut down again because of COVID. Um, they were open for a while, but unfortunately, they're closed again. Key Gaming Repair, thank you so much for that super chat. I greatly appreciate that. That means a lot. Thank you. 
I really do appreciate that. You have no idea. Like, that's awesome. Do they have a Jesus pinball? I'm sure there's a Jesus pinball out there. I don't know. Never seen it, but I mean, there's thousands of pinball tables, whether they be virtual or physical tables that have been created over the historic history of pinball. Sam Newsman says the price is too much. Jamie Loken wants to know who's excited for Fishtails. I'm excited for Fishtails. That's one of the few games I've actually played. I self-admittedly am not a huge person that has experienced a ton of those Williams tables just because of my age. And typically any time I went to an arcade that had pinball machines, I was always a sucker for the movie inspired pinball games. So like Jurassic Park and Terminator and Adam's Family, things like that. I always went straight for those, Back to the Future as well. So I wasn't, I wasn't going straight for the, the older, more established Williams tables like I probably should have been growing up. But you know, that's what happens when you're a teenager. You just you gravitate to what you, what you know. So I'll be anxious to check out that Attack from Mars one. I'll just have to wait a little while to like recuperate some funds before I can buy it because I, like I said I can't, can't buy it all. Not, not this early anyway, like I said, not with the PS5 and the Xbox. Alfred, yes, I have played the Nintendo Switch uh, pinball games. That's, I have the, the Star Wars pinball on my Nintendo Switch and I've enjoyed it significantly. It's, you know, very fun and easy to just take on the road. Anytime I have like a work event or traveling, I always take my Switch with me and I'm always playing that Star Wars pinball game. Oh, look at that. Look at that jerk, blocking the ramps. Enigma, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sam Newsman, think of how many Cobra Troopers you could buy for as much as one table. It's only like five, six. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a good perspective to keep. Absolutely. I'm really surprised I've lasted this long on this table. That's another thing growing up is like pinball was always like 50 cents, 75 cents a dollar to play. And I was like, no, I can I can get much more out of my quarter if I go, you know, play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Street Fighter. All right, we lost the X-Men. What's next? Tell me what game table you want to see next out of the 10 we've got listed. And I've got the, the 10 Marvel tables listed in the video description box as well for your convenience. Collection. Attack from Mars is where it's at for a game list. You know, Rexer, I, I was very impressed with their game list, uh, mainly for things like Funhouse that were literally just came out in like the Williams 6 or Pack 6 on Steam. So to see that, and uh, I think there was another game that recently just came out on that Williams 6 pack on Steam um, that was in that 10 title listing for the Attack from Mars. I was like, holy cow, you know, this is some fresh stuff. So very cool for Arcade 1-Up to, you know, have that mixed in with their table because it gives them a nice little edge for people like me that have already bought damn near everything that was already out there on Steam. All right, so we got several votes for Fear Itself, it looks like. So we'll go Fear Itself, Fear itself. which is an underrated comic storyline, in my opinion. Jamie, to answer your question, I am buying Star Wars. That is my main focus, is buying the Star Wars table. Uh, it's not that I don't like this Marvel, I just simply can't afford to buy them both. Blame that on the PS5 and the, the Xbox. So this is a good looking table. Got lots of bad guys. Where's Black Panther? Yeah, he didn't make the cut on the tin table, unfortunately. Mark says, fingers crossed Attack from Mars arrives in the UK soon. Yeah, I really hope they get something figured out for the UK, because I know you guys have been, like, you know, kind of left out in the wind, hoping for you know some newer releases and it's it's been it's been rough i think like smith's toys or smith's toys or whatever is like really the only only new place that's been getting anything i fear the final prophecy is at hand here it comes boom so yeah 
yeah, this is definitely like a, a bad guy centric table for sure. And Tommy Wiseau, the room pinball. Oh man, that is a fantastically horrible movie, and I mean mean that in the most like kind way. Like, it's just one of those movies that it's so bad it's good. <laughs> like you watch it and you're like, what is this? And you're like, oh, this is like a, a bad you know '80s B movie, and then you realize it was filmed in like 2006, and you're like, oh, it's it's not. Are they releasing that universal table that was leaked in pictures months back? Um, they won't officially acknowledge that even exists, so getting answers on that is not going to be something we'll, we're going to be able to get officially. Uh, I assume, I mean, that's just literally like leaving money on the table if they don't. I mean, those universal titles are just massive IPs, so that would be an, a huge, easy win, I think, for them to release those. You know, Jaws, Back to the Future, E.T., the Jurassic Park franchise, so I hope so. I they'll have my money in a heartbeat if it, you know, has either Back to the Future artwork or um, well, if I'm being honest, I'll I'll buy it regardless. Like Jaws artwork, ET artwork, Jurassic Park slash World artwork. I mean, any of those Universal IPs, I will for sure um, support the artwork for. So they pretty much got my money if it happens. Green Lantern Jolly Ranchers. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> Love it. So that little loop-de-loop -loop around the back behind the flippers is a really unique feature on this table that took me a little while to adjust to the first time I, I played this. I was like, what is going on? Ah, crap. Almost missed the nudge. Second time. Come on, shoot it. There we go, finally got it up there. Whoa, losing track of four. Sorry, let me pause for a second, catch up with the chat. Clarky, one of many, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for that super chat. I, I really do. I mean, that means a ton. Thank you so much. My family, I would love to have a family guide table. They've, they've got one. Um, I don't know what they would work it into with. With It would have to be kind of like a hodgepodge um, table. Maybe, like I said, maybe things like that were better suited for, you know, if they do this version 2 and have like a... The, the download store where yeah, you can have your Marvel table or your Star Wars table or whatever and you can download the Family Guy table that way you don't have to invest in buying a whole nother machine because as much as I love Family Guy I don't see it like they had a, a themed Family Guy table that had like the artwork and everything I don't see them selling a ton of those so that would be something best suited for like a, a download store I believe And speaking of download stores, like, what do you guys think? So, hypothetically, version 2 um, has, like, Wi-Fi, or if they have, like, the, the Wi-Fi kit for this early kits, what do you think we should expect, or what would you pay for pricing to buy some downloaded pinball packs? So, like, say you get five games in a, a download pack, or ten games. What, what would you guys pay for that? Or what do you think is a reasonable price? The Rexer, what monitor am I playing on? Tech from Mars. I am playing on a 42 inch 4K Samsung monitor. It is absolutely overkill. This is. Um, it's, a, it's a TV, not really a monitor. But uh, it is. It's definitely overkill. Like, I have to, like, scroll my eyes. I use it as my computer monitor, but it is. It's over. It's oversized for sure. For whatever reason, I was like, hey, instead of doing a, a dual monitor setup, I will do a giant TV and call it good. And so far it's worked, but there's settings like right now where I'm playing pinball and I wanted, you know, at full screen that I couldn't couldn't really get that and the chat going simultaneously without having some issues. So hope that answers your question. It, it's literally a very 
cheap, easy uh, Samsung TV that is 4K. I think it has 120 hertz refresh hertz. It's been like a year since I bought this, so I've already kind of forgot. But I paid like 224 at Walmart when it came out. I've been happy with it, no issues. I've always been a Samsung TV guy. That's just the brand I've always gravitated towards. It's every TV in my house is Samsung, so. $25 for a download pack. This is Stringer Films. Zero Hero says 20 bucks. Sam says 20 bucks. Nevo says 20 to 30 seems fair. Mad Dad says 10 to 15. There's a prophecy. A certain time to slaughter at the price of my own life. Hopefully, with you know whatever they figure out with Wi-Fi and online connectivity and all that thing. Hopefully, it's you know rather easy turnkey type of stuff where you literally just download it onto the machine. You don't have to like download it on your computer, put it on the USB, put it in the machine, upload it. Because I mean, for most of us, that's pretty simple. But for a lot of people, potentially people that are gonna be buying this, you don't want to make it that complicated. You want to make it as easy as possible. All right, what what's next? What table do you want to see? Next, we got a couple. Oh, we got more than a couple left. Single player results. Back out Single here. And my collection. I miss my oh, cool toy evening. Hey man, was catching a commercial for the old Simpsons Halloween special. I know you seem like a Simpson. Oh, I do love the Simpsons. Yeah, I was wondering, have you got any ideas how they will end the series? Um, I hope they go out with a bang, kind of like the movie with the Simpsons movie. I hope they just wrap it up with a, you know, like an hour and a half, an hour, 45 minute, you know, uninterrupted movie in theaters or, you know, Fox, give them a commercial free block. I mean, you've been, Simpsons has made Fox money for 30 plus years or 30 years. Yeah. Let them just have an un, un messed with commercial interruption nothing just let them have two hours on tv and wrap it up i mean I, I think that would be the the way to end the simpsons jamie loken says do you think well-played table will do well at 4.99 only 50 dollars less and possibly the same price as one up i think it'll definitely do i think that one definitely like nudges out the competition for toy shock just because it's got um, more tables and it has Wi-Fi and expansion capabilities. It doesn't have a scoreboard, which is uh, kind of a bummer, but we'll have to wait and see just how it plays to begin with. Fish B says, I hope I can see one in person to see how large the screen is, but not sure if anyone will have a display unit. Yeah, that'll be tricky, especially since we're in like COVID protocols right now. Um, I know my local Walmarts all have like they either took away their arcade one up demo units or like they've got them all like taped off and roped off to where you're not supposed to operate them. So I wouldn't expect just due to supply constraints to see a lot of setup, you know, demo tables out there. Probably have to wait till 2021 before you can potentially see one in store. It's time for Venom. So we got to vote for Venom. All right. Make sure I've. I'm like crossing them off my list here so I don't like double dip because I have a goldfish memory. TJ says, Sup man, are you going to buy a game and watch Super Mario Brothers? Absolutely. I'm super bummed that like there was no like American pre-orders. They went up for pre-order like in the UK on Amazon, but like nothing has happened for America which drives me crazy and leads me to believe it's going to be very difficult to find so the day it drops I'm going to go to Target, Walmart, Best Buy and cross my fingers and hope for the best because I think that's going to be a scalper's dream considering it's you know it's Nintendo, it's relatively cheap at $50, it's before the holidays I mean you're, you're checking all the boxes for you know a scalper wanting to buy those in bulk and flip them on Facebook Marketplace or eBay for $100, $125, $150. So I'll be picking one up if I can find one. Joe, what's up? Cool toy. I personally can't wait to get one of these. Did you pre-order it? Have you Were you able to get one of these? Because like I said, they've been in and out. You know, they popped up on GameStop a couple times and then disappeared and they popped up again this morning and it looks like they're out of stock, but you know, some people were able to get it, so we'll see. 
Jamie, I don't recall, were you at CES and did you see one in person? Yes, I was one of the first people to play the Star Wars one and I was very pleased with it. And again, that prototype was a little bit different from what we're going to get in the retail unit. The prototype had a computer running in it and everything. It wasn't the actual Android hardware that they've settled on, but for the most part, I was pleased with it. Um, it, was, it was definitely a better experience than what I had gotten from Toy Shock, because I'd played the Toy Shock, and that was really my only point of reference for these at-home pinball machines that are under $1,000. So it definitely blew the Toy Shock out of the water then at CES. But now, you know, 11 months down the road, uh, there's more competition now than ever. There's the At Games Machine, there's Well Played Toys, and there's, you know, new and improved version of Toy Shock, so we'll see how it goes. Zero Hero says, Disney keeps ruining my entire childhood. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of people that were not happy with how the, um, the Star Wars franchise ended as far as the movies. Um, I think Disney's been doing some stuff right, like obviously The Mandalorian. I don't think anybody dislikes The Mandalorian. Um, I enjoyed Star Wars Rebels, I enjoyed the Clone Wars, but, you know, technically, if you want to get, like, super technical, that wasn't so much Disney as it was, like, David Filoni, um, so, he's kind of, <laughs> he's kind of the guy that's doing everything right for him, man, I forgot how easy it is to lose the ball right out of the gate on this table. When is Attack from Mars pre-order, says Al Boogie Tang. Um, so the Attack from Mars and the Star Wars pre-orders supposedly are going to be mid-November slash end of November. And it will be delivered before January 1st, 2021. At least that's what John Diamonin said today on Facebook. So we'll see if, assuming everything goes right, they can, you know, hit those hit those markers and they don't have any issues at the ports, you know, they can deliver on that, but, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be this week, definitely not going to be next week, the way it sounds, so, you got a couple weeks to pinch pennies and, you know, put some funds, funds together for the Attack from Mars and the Star Wars machines, if that's what you're looking for. And most likely, if I had to guess, Star Wars would go up first at Walmart, just because they're a huge partner with Arcade One Up. And that, if I had to guess, would be you know, who gets first crack at Star Wars. And then in Attack from Mars, they talked like that was going to be a, a store or an arcade one-up online exclusive. That way they can ship it direct and potentially sell it for maybe $50 less. But again, if they even if they sell it for 500, 500 off their website, if you end up paying like $50 or $75 in shipping, um, you're really not making it making it out any better than if you would have bought it from like a GameStop or a Best Buy or a Walmart with free shipping, so. Yeah, I need to play that one again, because I just, I just got demolished at that one. I lost the ball every single time. Rogue One was fantastic, Rexer. You're absolutely right. Um, that one, I feel like that one doesn't get enough credit or love. Like, people went and saw it in the theater, and they're like, oh, wow, that was really good. And then they just, like, forgot about it. I enjoyed Solo. Like, I know that one probably doesn't get as much love as Rogue One, but I thought Solo was good. I mean, I thought it was sweet that we got, like, you know, Darth Maul back in the cinematic universe. Uh, we knew he survived because of the Clone Wars, but it's just nice to see him back in, you know, real-world movies. And I'm sure we'll see a little bit more of him in the Obi-Wan series that will no doubt be fantastic whenever that comes out. Hopefully next year. I think that starts filming in January. So I would expect that one probably be a, another fall release for 2021. Woody's Geek Channel, $500 a PC and I will buy them all. I mean, yeah, you can do that. There'll definitely be a lot of people out there I know that'll be buying these and modding them like crazy and throwing, you know, gaming PCs and having thousands of tables. And, That'll be cool to see what everybody comes up with. It'll be cool to see what they come up with, like, at a price. Like, how much, you know, modding one of these little arcade one-up machines turns into, even with you adding a gaming PC or something. Like, do you keep it under a thousand still? Do you, like, do you cross that threshold because you got, like, $500 in the machine? You spend another $500 on, you know, modding equipment, gaming PC, and... Is it, is it a win if you keep it at $1,000 and under for your mod, or do you expect to go a little over budget? I mean, you can you can go as crazy as you want to be, I know, like, you can, 
a gaming PC is kind of like such an open-ended term. Like a gaming PC could be a couple hundred bucks, could be a couple thousand dollars. Like you know, it's crazy to what you could what you can do with gaming PCs as far as how sophisticated you can get them. I'm really anxious to see the new uh, Venom sequel with Carnage and Woody. Woody Harrelson playing Carnage. I think that'll be pretty interesting. I do wish it was more associated with the Marvel folks. That way it could be a better movie overall, but I'm still still a big fan. That's one of my favorite games of all time on the Sega Genesis was Maximum Carnage. I played that beat em up to death. So anything Venom, Carnage, and Spider-Man related has always, always got my attention. Suit unlock. It's not happening. Oh, he's got the crazy voice. Catch up with the chat real quick. Do you know if Home Shopping Network will carry the Big Buck Hunter? Um, I don't know. I would assume Best Buy is gonna have, you know, that one for a while. And as odd as this sounds, um, if you think about it, it would probably make sense. So Bass Pro Shops is a massive like outdoor world um, brand and retail outlet out there. I don't know, depending on where you live, if you've ever heard of it. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Bass Pro carrying Big Buck Hunter. Like a, to me, that seems like an easy win for them to sell that. Um, a place that sells you know hunting supplies, fishing supplies, guns, outdoor equipment, all that type of stuff. Like they've got a huge online distribution, you know, current setup with their many, many retail outlets and stores and warehouses and distribution centers. So I would be surprised to see something like Big Buck Hunter from Arcade one up pop up on Best, uh, not Best Buy, uh, Bass Pro Shops. But right now, Best Buy is all that's listed. So, all right, what's next? We've got, we've got Civil War, Wolverine, Thor, Marvel's Women of Power, Ghost Rider, and Fantastic Four. Those are... Those are what is left out of these 10 included games. Do I think the Street Fighter 2 head-to-head -head $300 is worth it? Retro Bliss 520 12 gigabyte SD card. Not sure if the speakers are worth the upgrade. I would upgrade the speakers. I have the cocktail cabinet myself. I put a modded PC in it and I absolutely love it. Um, it's probably my most played arcade one-up machine right now next to my Star Wars one. But um, it's it's great. Uh, as of right now, Joe, they are not available. So um, you may check in, see, you know, every morning, see if somebody's like canceled a pre-order or something like that. You might get another shot at it. But as of right now, GameStop appears to be sold out on it. Barricade, do I think at games pinball will be worth it since the Zen tables won't be allowed on it? I mean, yeah. I mean, there's going to be other pinball tables available on the at games machine. So, I mean, it really just kind of boils down to what you're going for. What specifically, if like you, if you want to play Marvel tables, you want to play the Star Wars tables, uh, you know, go to the arcade one up. If you want to play tons more other tables, go to the at games one. It's just kind of a Goldilocks thing. You know, you find, find what suits your needs the best because I think there's obviously options for all, everybody um, but the at games at that price point I, I think that's an easy win I mean it's just got so many more functions and capabilities out of the box um, the bigger play field and everything it, it's hard to hard to say no to something like that so we got Wolverine we got a writer vote we got a woman uh, Nick Cage writer any new Pac-Man arcades uh, not since like last week yeah, sucker for the license table. Me too. Like I said, I own the Star Wars tables on here. I own them on my Switch. But something about having a, a machine next to my Star Wars arcade cabinet, put them, you know, side by side. It's gonna look great. All right, so I need a tiebreaker. Looks like I've got one votes for different different tables from everybody. I need Suicide Squad pinball. Uh, which do I think would be better, Marvel or Star Wars? Um, that depends on how you feel about the new trilogy, because there's some of those new trilogy games in there. 
Uh, I know a lot of people think of the new trilogy like it's the worst thing ever, so if you don't want to play anything that has those kind of characters, it does have some of those in there as well as some art. But overall, I think the Star Wars game lineup they picked was pretty good and leaned a little more towards the original trilogy side, which was nice to see. Um, I'm biased. I love Star Wars. I'm also a Marvel nerd, so like I said, I would honestly buy them both if I could afford it, but I'm leaning more towards Star Wars just because that's more of where my fanboyness you know, lies, so to speak. Ghost. Okay, so we got more votes for Ghost Rider. So it looks like Ghost Rider is gonna gonna win. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Twilight Zone would be sweet. Absolutely, I would love to see that one. That's sweet. It's like. A year and a half ago in the comics, they did this thing where uh, the Punisher was possessed by the spirit of Ghost Rider. So the Punisher was uh, like a spirit of vengeance. And you know, don't talk about crazy. Frank Castle as Ghost Rider. Oh man. He thought he was a, a badass that was cracking skulls before. You give him a, a motorcycle and a flaming skull and a baseball bat. Ugh. Definitely some uh, hellacious table artwork we got going on here. So let me let me see the Star Wars table that I mentioned them earlier at the very beginning of the stream. I've got them listed here. I just gotta pull it up, answer that for you real quick. So the Star Wars tables: it's Boba Fett, A New Hope, Act Two Island, the Battle of Membon, Darth Vader, Masters of the Force, Star Wars Rebels. Han Solo, The Force Awakens, and The Empire Strikes Back. Those are your 10 tables you're going to get on the Star Wars table. And then again, Attack from Mars, it's going to be Attack from Mars, Fish Tales, The Getaway, Junkyard, Medieval Madness, Whitewater, Red and Ted, Funhouse, Tales of Arabian Nights, and No Good Gophers. So, good lineup there. Woody's Geek Channel, what's up? Thank you so much for that. It says, if it's solid construction and it's good resolution, I would do $500, but I will buy all three. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Yeah. That's one thing we, we haven't got the, the confirmation on yet. They, they originally said they wanted to do 1080p, 60 frames per second on these arcade one-up pinball machines, but we haven't got confirmation if that's what they achieved, at least not that I saw as far as anybody confirming that. So, fingers crossed we're getting 1080p, 60 frames per second on all these games. Best artist since Frank Frazetta. Absolutely. Imagine a Marvel Zombies pinball table. Ooh. So the Battle of Memban or Memban. So, uh, like, you go into, was it like the Solo movie had that? Had like the dirty stormtroopers. But that's kind of where that timeline lines up is that Solo movie. Joe Merkel says he wants a Knight Rider table. Tech from Mars definitely has the best lineup. Cheers, Pinball, Sam, and Diane. Alright, let's get this Ghost Rider table going. Oh, look at that. We just got the devil just chilling. Uh, you'll notice the uh, target strategically placed uh, at the low, we'll call it lower abdomen of the devil there. Um, that just cracks me up. Oh, and another cool thing about the Attack from Mars table is they're all the uncensored versions, so you're not getting any censored, watered-down version of those classic tables. You're getting the authentic tables as they were meant to be. So I thought that was great news. I would understand both ways if they did or didn't do that, but I was happy to see they went with the, you know, the real deal holy field, so to speak. Yeah, let's uh, let's hit the devil in the crotch. Uh, that's the name of this table. Got a sweet shotgun over there. Those flippers are out of date. <laughs> the cool thing in you know the PC versions, you can change a lot of the settings on these tables. Um, you can get rid of the, the pinball trail, like the little silhouette line. You don't like that. Most of the time you can change the, the ball colors and things like that. 
I would, again, this is an assumption on my part, I would assume we'll still be able to do similar things like that on the arcade 1-up version. But we won't know for sure until we see some actual prototype, sort of physical retail units out there in the marketplace, or, you know, somebody gets their hands on it, so... You know, let them know. If you want anybody to review these, tell Arcade 1-Up, hey, send these out to X, and, you know, tell them what people you want to see reviewing these. Johnny Blaze. Doing that hellacious wheelie. I gotta admit, the devil is being very, you know, considerate and, you know, understanding of just how often I'm hitting him in the crotch with a steel ball. Like, you'd think he'd be a little upset, but nope. He's, he's A okay with it. Appears to be anyway, because he is not doing anything besides turning around and going, oh, what happened? He's like, oh, the ball went by me, what do I do? He's got a very slow reaction time, too. Like, it, it whizzes by him, and he's like, what? What was that? Who are you again? Playing Ghost Rider, Joe. Does the Ghost Rider pinball table have beautiful people song? Not that I can hear in my headset right now. Uh, that would be sweet. Marilyn Manson? Hollywood Stan, I would like to see Back to the Future 1. Me too, fingers crossed. I really hope that that happens. Star Trek Next Generation, that is a, a massive um, table that is just... As far as fandom, I mean, I know a lot of people that would love that. That's a really good table to play, too. Like, not... Not only for like Star Trek fans and nerds, it's it's a really fun table to play. It's another one of those that I actually grew up and actually played because, like I said, I always gravitated towards the pinball tables that were based on movies and television shows, just because that's that's what I knew the most. Sam Newsman says Golden Tea is two hundred fifty dollars Best Buy at the moment. Just had Home Depot price match. Yep, that's part of their like uh, Black Friday special. I've had it for, I think, a week or so now at that price. But it's a good deal if you haven't got that Golden Tee. I mean, that one's a, a fun machine. I know when it first got announced, everybody's like, Golden Tee? This is, that's a dumb bar game. And then people were starting to buy it and pick it up. And they're, I, I saw tons of comments in the Facebook groups like, oh, my God, you know, I didn't think I was going to like this. And now it's like my most played cabinet. So my buddies come over. It's like even my wife is, you know, trying to beat my beat my score on Golden Tee. So... I think that one was a, kind of a surprise hit for him. Oh, that's what I get for looking away. Zero Hero, any game where you can hit the devil in the crotch, I'm sold. I mean, really, what more do you want? Like, when whoever was designing this table, I'm sure there was, you know, a couple early boardroom meetings and, you know, some mock-up drafts and everything. And they're like, okay, you know, what, what do you think of theme? And he's like, oh, you know, it's Ghost Rider. So we're, we're thinking, you know, dirty, you know, metallic, rustic. Uh, we're thinking, you know, devils and demons and things like that. And he's like, as far as an action feature, he's like, I'm thinking about having the devil, of course. You know, he's going to be a prominent, you know, centerpiece. And he's like, as far as interacting, he's like, what if he's like, we allow the players to hit the devil in the crotch? He's like, wouldn't that be cool? He's like, doesn't everybody want to hit the devil in the, in the mommy daddy button? I imagine that's probably how that conversation went, so. Enigma says, cool toy, time to get real pinball games inside your hat. <laughs> I, I do need to do that, absolutely. Bring out Attack from Mars. I, I will do a separate stream for those Attack from Mars games, for sure. Just because, like I said, they, they need their own attention. Alright. Let's see. Okay, we've got Civil War. Wolverine, Thor, Fantastic Four, and the Marvel Women of Power left. So let me know what game you want to see next. Single player and hot seat. My collection. Enigma, the worst arcade machine is Frogger. Uh, it's definitely probably the hardest one for them to sell at $500, especially when they released that countercade. Um, they kind of like 
took themselves out at the knees on that one. Obviously, there's people that are going to love Frogger no matter what. Would prefer that bigger one, but the $500 price point on that one I thought was a little much. Uh, that one for sure, I, I think, should have been a $299 for sure. Frogger's 2020 of Arcade 1-Up Games is Zero Hero. Matt Harmon says the A1-Up Frogger will be the first to get marked down. So, Matty votes for Fantastic Four. Sam says Fantastic Four. We got Woman, Woman of Power. So, we're two and two. We need a tiebreaker. We got two for Fantastic Four, and we got two for the women. Need a tiebreaker. Jose, how the NBA Jam cabinet so far? I enjoy it. Um, I really enjoy it ever since I modded it and put my uh, IL Euro sticks and buttons in it. It's much more comfortable than those stock joysticks. Stock joysticks will get you by, but... If you're serious and you're putting in tons and tons of hours into those games, you definitely want better controls. Um, I think I'm up to like 160 some online games on NBA Jam, so I've definitely got my money's worth, I feel. Alright, so it looks like Fantastic Four wins the vote. And I'm going cross eyed, there we go. Four. Couldn't Same find it. Marvel's First Family. They. I'm excited that Marvel now has, you know, the rights for the Fantastic Four and the X-Men and everything because, oh man, they, they've tried to do it just justice with the movies, but they've not succeeded. Uh, especially that last one. That last one was, oh, so bad. So bad. Oh, Enigma's out there with rhymes. What can you catch but not throw? Uh, I'm going to assume a cold. Because you can catch a cold, but you can't throw a cold. Fantastic Four. Alright, let's go. Be ready for anything. I will say, the design on this table... The Thing... Looks... Uh, slightly undersized. I just, I'm used to him... Just looking Hulk proportions almost, you know, just so much wider. Maybe, maybe this is Ben Grimm without his rock steroids. Because he, he looks impressive, but he definitely looks like he would get his butt kicked by the Juggernaut. And he definitely looks like the Hulk could throw him in space. That's a cool feature though. I do like that. It kicks the balls up, punches it, clobbering time style. Okay, these ramps are a little more difficult than I thought. Another cool feature on the arcade one up pinball machines that I'm anxious to really put it through its paces and test is the accelerometer with the whole like nudging and tilting. I want to see just how sensitive it is and how sturdy it feels because you know some of these people, especially Great since it's a, a, a scaled down version, are really going to be rocking their machines hey, hardcore. Nice so, be anxious to see how well they hold up under those uh, extreme playing conditions and how well they respond to things like that. Whether they feel delayed or if it just like it's hypersensitive and it goes into tilt and shuts you down. of ramps here though. Ah, I couldn't dang, stop it. it. Fantastic Four movie needs to open in the Baxter building. That would be a good good setup, I think. You know, Spider-Man come flying through with his bag on his head costume. Guns N' Roses $9,500. Sure. Yeah, here that's go, uh gentlemen and I assume at that price you have like the blood of Axel oh, Rose. Six imbibed in the ball somehow like it's a looks like a you know a crystal bowling ball type of thing and it's got like a blood droplet in it from Axel Rose because $9,500 like man that's crazy talk like I know Stern had like a, a crazy deluxe edition um, Stranger Things pinball machine it was like $10,000 but it came autographed by everybody in the cast and had like I think they only made like 250 of them or maybe 500 of them 
and it had a couple extra special features that none of the other stern Stranger Things machines had. So yeah, that was ten grand, but Guns N' Roses at ninety five hundred dollars. Man. Doom bots ain't nothing to it. Zero Hero says we need to do the Hulk versus Thing. That'd be sweet. I know I mean it's, it's happened a time or two in the comics. Doesn't ever technically work out well. They always try to be nice and like put him at a stalemate, but we know damn good and well the Hulk would literally turn they the thing into pebbles. Clobbering. Ah, oh, dang it. That didn't work well. JM, if you play pins in any tournament, they are all set up super sensitive to on the tilt. And that's kind of what I would suspect. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they have sensitivity settings inside the menu on the arcade one-up machines Here where you can put, like, you know, low, medium, and high. Because everyone's going to have different playing styles and different preferences. And if it's just super sensitive and not able to, like, tweak or change... Probably gonna have some bummed out consumers, especially at five hundred dollars. Deadpool slash Fantastic Four. Video gamer girl says I'm kind of torn between the Marvel Arcade One Up Pinball and the At Games, but kind of leaning towards At Games with the fact that it has Wi-Fi, etc., whereas Arcade One Up doesn't. Yeah, um, there's no denying that At Games machine has far more bells and whistles and features. Than the arcade one-up machine. We have um, to it's hundred dollars slash fifty dollars more, but you're getting a bigger screen. You're getting Wi-Fi. Um, you're getting a, a bigger back screen, secondary monitor, so to speak. Um, you're getting those older Gottlieb or Gottlieb Gottlieb titles. Single player results. Single player so that's kind of a meh, depending on if you like those or not. It's, it's it's all, again, back to personal preference. Some people absolutely love those tables. Some people love these tables. Some people hate these tables. Um, some people need that Wi-Fi and those leaderboards. Some people don't care about those type of things. It really is just going to vary from person to person. All right. Tables we've got left. We have Civil War, Wolverine, Thor, and the Marvel Women of Power slash A-Force. So let me know. we got four left out of the ten included games. Enigma says Juggernaut is better than Hulk, and I would disagree 100%. Um, Hulk is pretty much unstoppable as long as he's pissed off. Slash is the pinball fan, huge. Matty B, maybe favorite four, or Fantastic Four move takes place in the 50s, and then at the end they travel to the present. That'd be a good, all right. I'd be all right with that idea time travel explains where they've been this whole time jm says the iron maiden table is a really good pinball machine dub says i'm grateful that you cover these pinball machines as i aspire to someday possibly get one i just want to get the best one when i do a few youtubers cover digital pinball yeah and this like i said a lot of people are literally dropping 550 dollars on a blind pre-order for tables they probably never played or seen so that's what i was hoping to help them out it's like hey if you've got 500 dollars 550 dollars on your card credit card somewhere at least I could do is show you what you're gonna get because right now we still haven't seen you know anything besides some like splash sizzle videos from arcade one up we haven't seen these performing I've got to see prototype at CES but you know it's been a long time since that's happened and a lot of things have changed so this is the best we can do right now is just kinda give a heads up as to what you can expect with the game listing now that we know it alright so it looks like the women of power that is the Marvel's winner next a force. Single player Maddie B says one up Star Wars is an half eyesore. Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't like that new trilogy artwork. Um, I know Glenn Plenamento, my co host on the Retro Buzz, he definitely is not a fan of it. The good thing is it's predominantly all fixated on one side, so you can just slide it over against the wall if, uh, if that helps out. Because I think it's, you know, original trilogy on the left side, new trilogy on the right side. But I know a lot of people really hate that new trilogy, so that, that's going to be something that a lot of people potentially go out there and go the arcade graphics route and you know, get some new designs to plaster on there. Ah, there you go. You corrected yourself. Enigma. Juggernaut loses to the Hulk. There you go. That's, that's, now you're using your head. Hammerhead Fred, at games for me. Like, I can buy additional tables down the road. Yep. 
Did it rewrite reality? You're right. You it definitely is can. Strange. So we got I'm Black Widow, Miss Marvel, Spider Woman, Maybe you can be of uh, Lady Thor, Gamora, the Wasp. Dub says, I liked how at games allowed a person to rotate the monitor HD TV at a 90 degree angle for games like Pac-Man, most arcade game retro style. Does the at games have pinball capable like this? Yes. I mean, that's kind of a loaded question, but technically you'll be able to add additional tables and rotate them. So like if I'm playing tables that I have on my PC, I can rotate them 90 degrees so they're you know vertically on the at games pinball machine they've alluded to being able to play like arcade games in a vertical orientation on the at games pinball machine haven't seen actual proof of you know that working or being demonstrated but they've you know that's been and uh, something that's been hinted at as far as interchangeable potential like lockdown bar control panels because a lot of people are like why is the lockdown bar area so big it's like well if you put in some interchangeable control panels you could have joysticks and buttons and potentially play like shmups and vertical games on your pinball machine me personally i probably not going to play games like that just because i would prefer to play them in the arcade form factor but you know on a lot of people out there space is an issue they're going to say sweet i want to play pac-man even if it's on a pinball machine it's vertical it's close enough so teach their own you know that's it's always that options thing as long as the options out there you know it'll it'll make somebody happy it doesn't have to make everybody happy it's just an option out there Jose, who's your favorite Marvel heroine? Mine is Scarlet Witch. Hmm, that is a tough one. Uh, I'm going to say Spider Gwen. And that, that may be like too off, off base for people, but it's like alternate version of Gwen Stacy, alternate universe version of Gwen Stacy, where she's technically the, the Spider Man of her universe, and Peter Parker was her boyfriend, and he died instead of vice versa. I thought she was a really cool character that was created, I think, around like 2016. Um, I was a big fan of that one. So, yeah, Spider Gwen's probably my, my favorite female Marvel comic character right now. Enigma says, worst woman hero is Batwoman. Ugly costume. Squirrel Girl is cool. Rogue, Night Sugar. Ooh, yeah. Hard to, hard to pass up on Rogue right in that southern accent. She's got those awesome powers. Uh can't touch her though so that's kind of rough rogue is super sexy sugar is what enigma Let's says black widow is a badass though for sure i was super bummed that you know her movie keeps getting delayed and pushed back i was anxious to see that i felt so bad because, like, you know, the toys were in the stores back in May, and then they've already came and went. And like, like, what do you do if you're, you know, like Marvel and Disney and Hasbro and these companies that make these toys to coincide with the movie releases? Like, do you just, like, take the loss, or you just do you try to re reissue the same toys again, you know, a year down the road? Like, what do you do in that circumstance? It's, it's a rough scenario for sure. We need to work together. Need to work together. Oh, I'm getting Over there. trounced on this table so spotted. far. Damn it. I missed. Come on. We should look for another Also way anxious to see the new Thor movie because they're gonna have Natalie Portman coming back and she's gonna reprise her Jane Foster role and she's gonna turn into Lady Thor. Which is an awesome character. Uh, one of my favorite comic writers of all time. Kind of came up with Jason, Jason Aaron. He wrote Thor for several years, and his run on Thor is probably my favorite of all time. I mean, it was just so many good storylines and arcs. And like I said, he created the the Lady Thor character, which some people just look at and scoff. But when you actually read the story in the comic, you're like, oh wow, this is it's got depth. This is good this. character, good character development and everything. I mean, it's entertaining for sure. So yeah. Sucked it up on that table for sure. I think I've got one ball left, but I'm not doing well. Damn it. I missed. Come on. We should look for another way around. Yeah. I've got 
one. Keep getting shot down in the corner. Damn it. This is by far the table that is beating me the most. It doesn't necessarily feel like it's table design. It definitely feels like it's user error. It's me Opinion sucking it up. It's, like it's not the table fight. being I'm overtly difficult. It's just, I'm not doing so hot on it at all. Ball one locked. There we go. That's a big point total. That helped. As, I, isn't working, as I pat we myself on the back, plan. I lose the ball immediately. That's the reason I'm not trying to get the entire cabinet, as the cabinet keeps the monitor position at the same normal for TV angle. Seems yep. like we'll be here Hot girl a is though. too hidden. Short woman, not my cup of tea. <laughs> Matt Harmon says, Black Widow is probably my favorite. Rogue is a close second. <laughs> Stop nudging the table like you're going to tilt it. Yeah. I was getting too aggressive. Every time I, I saw it like aiming straight for the middle, I was trying to get it off, off course, and it wasn't, wasn't working for me. All right, we got Thor, Civil War, and Wolverine. Those are our last, last tables. <laughs> I've seen bigger ball. Mad Dad Gaming, I got to roll out. Have a good one, Cool Toy. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you checking out the stream. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Jose, out of all the arcade one-ups that have been released so far, which is my favorite? So, I play my cocktail cabinet the most. That is technically, you know, different because I've modded it, so I've got any and all games on it. I'm still blown away to this day by the Star Wars machine. Uh, that plastic yoke is, you know, I'm just impressed with how well that thing actually works. And the fact that they were able to hit that like $500 price point prior to that, you know, it just seemed so impossible. So the fact that it was so well done, the emulation was great. It was the first time they started really working with Code Mystics and we got to see all these cool features like scan lines and difficulty and like you got to change the vector glow and things like that. I think by far Arcade 1UP Star Wars cabinet was their best cabinet they've created thus far as far as technology. Um, no issues with it as far as you know QA or anything like that so to me that would be my vote is my favorite I probably I don't play it as much as the rest of them but I still play it quite a bit because it is now modded as well and I got Glenn's GRS flight yoke on there which is all metal for the most part except for some reinforced handles but I like it I like it a lot all right Wolvie looks to be the winner now Wolverine Single player and <laughs> Enigma keeps trying to sneak in the universal table. Matty Boy says, I got, or excuse me, Matty Dragon Ball Z. I got my Star Wars for 300 and you got a heck of a deal. I paid full price and I don't regret it. I know like later on when the whole um, $50 cabinet clearances were going on, people were getting that Star Wars cabinet for $50, which just blows my mind. Like props to anybody that got that deal because that is a uh, hell of a deal. $50, that Star Wars cabinet. Man, good, good on anybody that was able to score that deal. I like this table. I do like this table a lot. It's, it's very, it's very Wolverine as it should be, but you got, you know, you got X-23 on the table. You got Wolverine's son, Dakin. You got classic, classic Wolverine, or not classic, it's, you know, yellow and blue. That's my version of Wolverine brown and brown suit yellow suit you know people always have their preferences but uh, yellow and blue is what I grew up with as far as my version of Wolverine I was not the, the brown brown and tan suit kid aliens one up with the guns that one's a fun one well people figured out how to trick Walmart to get their cabs for fifty dollars yeah there was a lot of people buying it online full price shipping it to the store and then like doing a return rebuy thing I do best I'm not that guy I won't do that but props to anybody that pulled it off I, love, I really that's like one of my favorite features on this table is that they got the, the bumpers back there the sentinel heads and already lost the ball 
Sabretooth hanging out there. You got Silver Samurai in the top left hand corner. I mean, you got, you got all your good Wolverine bad baddies. The voice acting on this table is not bad. I like the whoever they got for Wolverine. Soon, Ares. I am what you will be. Almost lost it. And a did lose it. Ball lost. Sabretooth. Sentinel action figure. So uh, Hasbro did a like a fan back kick. Kickstarter type of thing that they call the Has Labs um, Sentinel earlier in the year, and it is massive. You got to look it up. It is I forget the drive me crazy. I can't remember the, the final height on that thing, but it is literally like I want to say close to three foot tall or something like that. It's like three hundred fifty dollars. Uh, it comes out next year. It's one of those things like it's like kind of like a Kickstarter where you, you pay pay up front. But I think they had thousands upon thousands of people back it and it's just it's impressive I can't wait can't wait to see that like I I didn't I didn't back it just because I, I, I was like I want that and then I was like I have no idea where I would put that like it would be in the corner in my room scaring the crap out of me every time I come in the room and turn the light on like just, I wouldn't know what to do with something that was you know, literally the, the size of a small child in action figure form Filing. I like that sound effect we get when we hit the target. We get the bullet, bullet silencer. Dang it! Focus. And change the view angles. Yes, yes you can. And there's all sorts of different view angles in the PC version. Again, don't know if the arcade one-up version is going to have that. I would presume so. I mean, that's a pretty easy thing for them to do. Um, one of the options you can do is uh, like to have the camera follow the ball. To me, that makes me like way too almost like motion sick because it just moves way too much and you feel like you're. You're watching like a tennis game on steroids because your head is just bobbing all over the place trying to track the ball and it's too much. So I like this stationary view where I can see pretty much the entire table without issue. I think there's five different views if I remember correctly on these FX tables. Like I said, I, I, I stick, stick to the main, main body full table view 98% of the time. Did I hear the Gundam statue? Oh, I saw it. I mean, that that thing is uh, crazy. And the <laughs> I, it was immediately like uh, I'm, trying, I'm drawing a blank. It was the movie? There was two movies that came out, directed by Guillermo del Toro. Um, had Charlie Hunnam, where they were like in giant mech suits and they were fighting monsters that's immediately what I thought of when I saw that Gundam suit in Japan I'm like oh man it's real life they do have 90s yellow X-Men table it's my favorite yes Single player results. 90s Jim Lee X-Men is my my bread and butter that is what I grew up with and that was always you know that's, that's how I identify the X-Men is that Jim Lee art style all right our last two tables we got Thor and Civil War Thor and Civil War Enigma cool toy do your scores go up if you're inebriated <laughs> um, they don't uh, I'm a boring person I've never drank in my life I don't drink I don't smoke um, 
I don't judge people that do. It doesn't bother me a bit. But me personally, I just I don't drink and I don't smoke. I've always been an athlete and I've always been focused on training and stuff like that. And I've just been like one of those people like I want to always be there for people no matter what. So like if you call me at 4 a.m. said, oh, my God, I crashed my car. Come get me on Saturday. I won't be drunk. You can count on me. I'll come save your ass. And that's kind of how I've always approached my sobriety. All right, clean sweep for Civil War. Single player and hot. Today in Stamford, Connecticut, a violent. This is also one of my, like, my favorite comic storylines of all time. The movie we got with Marvel was pretty cool, but it left out a lot of the really cool things that happened in the comic books that I really would have loved to see. So it was kind of like Civil War diet, as far as. You know what we got in the movie versus what was in the comic, but I do love that we have a very close recreation of the actual comic cover art on this table. Oh, and the table's already froze up. That's right. I forgot it's all animated. It's supposed to. It's supposed to happen. Registration takes away any freedom we might have, any autonomy. Heroes didn't call Sam is asking, did I get the Triceraton Rodney pack? Yes, I did. I, that's one of those blessings in disguise where Target's notification on their website actually works. So I was sitting there watching TV last night, my phone buzzed, and then boom, I see Target notification. An item you've requested is in stock. Clicked on it. Oh my god, it's the neck of turtles, you know, Triceraton. Clicked it, checked out, no problem. So I got it. Should be in the mail, hopefully, maybe on the weekend. So I'm very happy for that one. Now I gotta go find the the other Triceraton 2 pack and I'll be good. I think I'll be caught up with all my neck of cartoon turtle figures. It says Zero Hero, alright, give me your number so I can always use somebody to call for emergencies. Hey, I'm there, man. Assuming you don't live like eighteen hours away. I'll be there, but it'll take me quite a while, so don't like bleed out on me or anything like that. Pika, how are the new Legends Ultimate Arcades? I can't answer that. I, I've got the 1.0. I haven't personally experienced the 1.1. I don't need the 1.1 because I've got the 1.0. So uh, I haven't personally experienced them though. But to my knowledge, it's pretty much the same thing with some slightly different tweaks um, to how it's put together and a couple of the different USB ports and how that's put together. But for the most part, I love my 1.0 cabinet. So I think people are relatively going to be happy with the 1.1. I don't know why you wouldn't. Real American over here, a little G.I. Joe. Says my dad wants an arcade cab, but he doesn't know what to get. It depends. Does your dad want an arcade cab for like the nostalgic factor? Like, does he want one that like looks like a specific arcade, or does he just want like the ability to play as many games as possible? Because like that's where like the road deviates between like at games and arcade one up because they like arcade one ups better for the collector that wants like something more authentic that looks you know, the part of an arcade at games is better for the people that just want to play as many games as possible. So that's how that works. Jose says team cap. I agree. I was always on the side of cap as well during the storyline. Matt Harmon. I hear you. Cool toy. I was always the babysitter back in the nineties club days. Yeah. Um, I have, I've done way too much time helping my buddies in and out of bars and dealing with their drunken antics definitely wears on you but you know I'd rather be able to keep my friends safe than call them an idiot and leave them leave them stranded and have them do stupid things like drink and drive home so as annoying as it is I'm happy to help them it's just like don't be thrown up in my car because when you sober up I will kick your ass that was that was my rule anytime I had to like pick up a drunken buddy or like transfer somebody from a place to a place and like if you throw up in my car like you'll you'll get 24 hours carte blanche but after that I will I will have retribution <laughs> Maddie says best frame in comic book is Jay Jonathan's face when he learns of Spider-Man's identity absolutely I agree I like there's so many awesome like reveals and things that happen in this storyline um, it's kind of a bummer like they they retconned it so quickly after Civil War ended in the comics and they like changed um, changed Spider-Man's storyline and status quo and like they reset it and they reset his marriage to Mary Jane and all that type of thing and I was like man I've been reading these comics on, for years soldier, and they're just like 
get rid of everything I, I know and love. Oh, we got night mode. Vision has joined like the pro registration bowling alley, side. black light mode is what we'll call that. Avengers, regroup. Not doing so hot on this one. Mini games. Okay, so mini games, Pika, the at games one is probably going to be the best option for your for your dad then. Mike Smith, what is my favorite front end? Hyperspin, launch box, coin ops. So I've always started with launch box and big box. That's where I can like cut my teeth on as far as putting stuff together. Hyperspin was okay. It was never my favorite. So if I had to rank them, coin ops would be number one for me now. Launch box slash big box would be number two. And then hyperspin would be number three for me personally. What's with the Cyberpunk 277 delay? So Cyberpunk 277. That one... Yeah, that one's been rough. People keep joking that, yeah, it's going to be released in 27 or 277, the way it keeps going. But you also got to keep in mind that thing is coming out on like nine different platforms. It's coming on, it's coming out on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, Xbox Series S, X, um, PC, Game, Steam. Just like there is so many different platforms that they've got to like test and you know make sure that it's a okay and working for it. And I think that's why they did this. You know, latest round of delays. I think it was all like 21 days or something like that. And people were like, well, 21 days, that doesn't matter. But I think they honestly just delayed it so they could do some additional testing since it's coming out on so many different platforms. So hopefully it's worth the wait. I assume it is. I mean, I know they've been working on it for years. Honestly, it probably would have been best suited for like a, just a modern, you know, PS5, new Xbox generation release, but that's it's a lot of money to leave on the table. So I can understand why they wanted to release it on all the other devices and machines. Dub, at games allegedly made a Genesis clone five years ago with built-in games that allegedly had terrible flaws regarding sound and occasional slowdown. Did they fix that with these pinball games? So I can tell you, at games has made a ton of terrible stuff in the past, and they've recently made a bunch of cool stuff now so it looks like they've course corrected the ship all the emulation on the I, I you can't see it it's off camera i just now realize this on the legends ultimate machine i've been happy with um, you can add tons of other games with it so that's been a score um, i assume this pinball machine is going to be good they've already said 1080p 60 frames per second is going to be what it's going to be running on so I would assume they've got any issues with lag and delay already sorted out, and it's not going to be a not going to be a, a thing because if you're going to try to release something for six hundred dollars and tout all these bells and whistles, and if it can't just do the basic functionality of playing the games correctly, then you're shooting yourself in the foot. And I think they're smarter than that now. I don't think they're going to make that mistake. All right, last table of the evening is Thor. This is the last of the 10 tables of the Marvel Arcade 1-Up machine. Will I ever get a cereal bowl haircut? No. Uh, I haven't cut my hair since CES. It originally started out as a joke uh, with a friend that I said, oh, I'll cut my hair when this whole pandemic thing is over. And that quickly turned into, oh, wow, this pandemic is not going anywhere anytime soon. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just gonna let it, just gonna let it grow. I'm just gonna keep letting it grow. Looks like I've got a sweet uh, mullet when I put my hat on because it's all just shoved up in my hat and in the back. Uh, my wife makes fun of me all the time, but you know that's that's the price you pay for having luscious locks like these. Says Zero Hero says I think At Games purchased a different pinball company. If you're into the multi kids, you'll like the Arc or the At Games pinball. Matt Harmon I Arcade has Dragon's Lair cabinet. Yes, they do. They also got that cool double dragon artwork as well. I've got an I Arcade on order. I was an early backer for their Kickstarter, so I'm anxious to check that out. Got to see it firsthand at CES, and I liked, liked Jong and the team and everything, and I liked that, the concept and the idea behind it, so I'm hoping, hoping everybody else likes the machine once they get it. Enigma Dragon's Lair 1 and 2 Arcade 1-Up for 500 bucks is worth it. Uh, yeah, once Arcade One Up sells their version of Dragon's Lair, I will buy it. I don't need it. I can play Dragon's Lair on 20 different machines in my house, but it's something about the aesthetics of having that original looking arcade of Dragon's Lair in my house that I cannot turn away. I mean, that's just, it's mwah to me. 
says Dub says adding games is an important feature. Thank you kindly. I couldn't agree more. There's a lot of people that don't have the space. You know, they want to be able to add their games. So I, I appreciate other companies out there. You know, you know, allowing us to play the games that we already own or something. You know, and putting on the machines that we're paying big money for. Pika Beat says, I wish you could have Virtual Pinball X via USB on the Legends Pinball. Mm -hmm. SF5 for the win says, can you put Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Legends Arcade? You can't put it on the arcade to run it natively, but say uh, you have a gaming PC that can run it, you can stream it over to your arcade and play it that way. So there's a little bit of a workaround. Says Pika says, wish you could add pinball games to the Legends pinball with a flash drive. Technically, you can. Matt says, cut my hair when I get the arcade one-up pinball. Cut my hair when Cyberpunk comes out. Sam says, should I go with coin ops in my cocktail cabinet mod instead of launch box? Really depends. So, like, if you want those like cocktail mirror mode functionalities, you can do it in coin ops. But most of the time, you have to replace the existing version of main because most of the time, coin ops comes with the older version of main pre-installed so you have to put a newer version on there that way you can have that tab setting to where you can bring in your main settings and do like cocktail mode where it rotates when player one and player two die or you can have that mirror mode so like on the you know arcade one up machine right now it's got that mirror mode where you're playing street fighter on half the screen here and player two is playing street fighter and they've got half the screen pointing towards them so if you want that Go with coin ops, yes, but you'll have to do some like file switcheroos to get a newer version of MAME on there for you. Jose says, do I play Mortal Kombat 11? I do. I played a lot when it first came out. I haven't got any of the new packs, honestly. Um, I, I'm, I'm not interested in playing Mortal Kombat with like Robocop and um, uh, Stallone and those kind of characters. I, I want to play Mortal Kombat with Mortal Kombat characters. I... I Teach their own, I know, but I, I just I don't like the cameo characters. It's not for me, so I haven't picked up any of those add-on packs. Mike says I just got the original SNK Capcom arcade PCB in the mail and about to install it. Hey, hopefully you got a good deal on that. Appreciate it, SF5. I welcome you to our family. All right, Thor is welcoming us to the family. The final table of the evening. It's very colorful. We got all the different all realms saved. represented. Fantastic! Fantastic, he says. In his old English the demons accent. of Muspelheim grow more powerful. Surtur stirs, my son. Only evil can come of this. Some big points on those volcanic bumpers. That was handy. Mighty. Fantastic. In the name of Odin, the All Father, may Asgard never fall. Damn. My Hela. Lost my. it. Replicades is $120 out in December. Yeah, I, uh, I've got a Kickstarter. Replicate unit from New Wave Toys that I've ordered for that Dragon's Lair cabinet. Like I said, I'm a sucker for that authentic cabinet look and experience. Plus, I love everything that New Wave Toys does. I literally own every single product they put out thus far. So, I'll be, I'll be putting up my thoughts on that when I get mine in the mail very soon on my YouTube channel. So, if, if you're a fan of those New Wave Toys... And you missed out on the Kickstarter, you can actually go on their website now and order one. So definitely, definitely recommend it because they do exquisite things with those devices and those little machines. And this Dragon's Lair one in particular, because even if you're looking at it and you're going, Oh man, that's way too small. Why would I want to play on this little tiny arcade? It, it serves two purposes. It looks awesome hanging on the shelf or sitting on your desk as a display piece, but it's also got an HDMI out. So you can hook it up to your TV, your big screen, whatever you got and play Dragon's Lair off your arcade. It even has USB Upon ports, so if you, if you don't want to play on the little included joystick, the of all who you can do it that way, which is awesome. Nay, Looks like we got a Loki Never versus Thor battle going on here. At least getting ready to. Amazing. Thor's jumping up top. Oh, 
looked like they were going to have a battle. Loki did a, a swing and Thor blocked it, and now they're just chilling, so they do something else to progress this fight along. Awesome. There we go. Nice shot. Get them get fighting. Get these brothers a dueling. Oh, I lost it. I was doing good. Awesome. Gotta, gotta beat Loki. Perhaps I should My wife totally has now, a crush Loki. on Tom Hiddleston. Loki in the movies. Please, Every time he came on screen, jackal. she would just swoon. She also has a crush on Thor, of course. He, you know, dude looks like a, a chiseled granite statue. Almost lost it. Almost lost it. Mighty. Doing pretty good on this Thor table. He's doing better, definitely better than that Women of Power table that I absolutely sucked it up at. Surtur stirs, my son. Only evil can come of this. Behold, the beauty of Asgard. Come, my child. Go play with your uncle. Uh, Loki's up there, a plotting. You came, beast. Fantastic. Nice shot. Okay, so I got that ramp dialed in, it appears. It's like four in a row. Catch up with the chat here. It was cheaper to go that route than the SVC NVS cartridge. Yeah, those are very expensive. You can add games to the Legends Pinball with a flash drive. Yes, not all of the games. It really kind of depends on what kind of games. But yes, you can add games via the USB mode. By Odin's Beard. Space Dude says, Arcade 1UP should make a KISS karaoke machine. Made like arcade cabinets preloaded with all the KISS albums and Sirius XM. You know, that's not a bad idea. I think that would probably actually sell, uh, for sure. And KISS, as everybody knows, loves to license their stuff. I mean, they are like the most merchandised band of all time. I think they legitimately have a Guinness Book World Record for that. Is that Fin Fang Foom? I don't think so. The demons of Muspelheim grow more powerful. Yeah, that, I'm trying to think of like all my my comic nerddom, and I can't really think of like Fin Fang Foom really crossing paths with Thor. Like that's always been like an Iron Man type of villain, and uh, Shang Chi and Iron Fist and those kind of guys. Uh, I can't remember him ever inter interacting with Thor. Matt Harmon, I didn't like Beer Gut Thor. They did him wrong. <laughs> Dad Bod Thor was funny. Uh, that was that was really good. Uh, Dub says, looks impressive, especially considering one can possess so many games in one emulator. I dig this. Jay Choi, can't wait for this to come out in December. Enigma says, I want to rock all night. And I assume, party every day. stirs my son only evil can come of this Oop, missed the ramp on that one Tremble. oh Surter. got some multi-ball action Let's see if I can do anything decent with this I just squander it. Awesome. Oh crap. L L went the same flipper. Mighty. Amazing. Nice shot. I always struggle when it gets like crazy multi ball. I feel like I'm just awesome. like ADHD, I'm all over the place trying to focus and it's just, it's not working well. Gotta give myself a seizure if I don't watch it. March to death. March to destruction. 
Oh, right down the pipe. To the slime from whence you came, beast! Right kickback activated! I'm gonna need that kickback, I feel. Yep. I will not falter. Perfect timing. Where's my kickback? Nothing? Oh, yeah, kickback's only on the sides. There we go. Sam says, gotta roll. You the man, cool toy. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. I am Thor Odinson, defender of Sam's Asgard. Sam's Good guy, another great toy collector like myself. I always enjoy seeing his content. Behold the beauty of Asgard. Left kickback activated. Jose says Fin Fang Foom is Iron Man and Fantastic Four's villain. Yep. Enigma says the flippers need to be hammers. That would make sense. That would, that would tie in with the aesthetic for sure. Of course, you got Milner over there hanging out, bottom right hand corner. I do like that the ball launcher is like a trebuchet cap catapult. It's very cool. Oh crap, I lost it. Never shall the God of Simpsons relax. arcade cabinet would be awesome, I agree. Trouble is like, what other games do you want to put with that? So. Alright. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Those are the 10 games that are coming on the Marvel Pinball Arcade Cabinet arcade cabinet pinball machine there we go that, that's better yes so those are the 10 games like i said i'm playing this on my gaming pc through steam the arcade one pinball machine the marvel machine and star wars and attack from mars they're going to be running on android so they're not going to have a computer inside of them however they've already said that they're optimized to run on the hardware so i would expect everything to pretty much look and feel relatively the same as they do on the pc version as they do on this Android version that we're going to get from Arcade 1UP. So, hope you guys found this educational, found this helpful one way, shape, or form, whether you pre-ordered the Marvel Arcade Cabinet or you didn't or you may be thinking about it. Either way, I put all the specs and the game listings down in the video description box below to help anybody out if you're watching this video later on in the future or whatever. But, thank you all so much for tuning in, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I, I literally cannot praise you guys enough because otherwise I would just be some weirdo talking to myself on a camera in my room and I really just the only reason I do YouTube is to help people I don't care about subscribers I don't care about views I don't care about monetization I just do this to help people and I hope hope this was helpful so hope everybody has a great good evening good evening good night good morning good afternoon whatever time you're watching this whatever time it is in your neck of the woods hope you're staying safe and having a good night so take care everybody have a good one